Welcome back to Tech Take. I'm Adam Housley in Los Angeles. If you watch us each week, you know news and technology collides, and a lot of times that means you're talking about defense specialties. A lot of the things we find in our military, a lot of the technology our military uses ends up in our hands at some point. And this week, once again, we have Allison Berrion, who comes on almost every single week to talk about everything defense technology. He's our defense specialist and war games columnist for foxnews.com. And we always joke about all the different uh, topics you've had. Some of them are incredible, some of them are fun. And this one is actually pretty interesting, the Terminator 2 robots. Uh, tell us about what Terminator 2 robots are, Allison. Yeah, I think this is a good example of uh, incredible, like wow, out of the box, quite relevant and also fun. Uh, these are called M Blocks, Adam, and it's a huge breakthrough. I, I don't know if you're familiar. Do you remember with the, uh, that Terminator 2 film where there was a female Terminator and she was sort of made out of what looked like a liquid steel, and if she lost an arm, it could come back to her and kind of recoalesce and reform into an arm again? Uh, so this we're going to have a Terminator 2 army? Uh, well, you know, it's been the goal of DOD to have a robot army for quite some time. That's kind of... Uh... Well, we'd all like to have a robot army. I'm sure my boss would like to have a robot <laughs> army full of robot anchors. But, I mean, what's the reality on this? Uh, yep, let's uh, drill down to brass tacks. So it, it is actually possible, and there's been a lot of naysayers, as you'd imagine, saying there's no way this is ever actually going to happen. This humble little block that we're looking at right now, uh, that is called an M block, and that is genuinely paving the way for uh, ultimately creating those types of Terminator sort of machines. So what we're looking at here, Adam, you can probably see there's no visible mechanism for moving. They're just sort of flying around, tumbling around, uh, jumping on top of each other and connecting. Uh, so what's amazing is that they have no visible mechanism of movement, but they still attach to each other and they can work together as a group uh, to form uh, shapes. So we're looking at one right outside. So you can see that it's not even impeded by terrain. Now, granted, grass is not the highest degree of difficulty in terms of terrain. But this is just early days, and uh, I was really pleased to see. They, they made the announcement in Tokyo last week, and I was really pleased to see uh, that they have indeed made this breakthrough. So it's kind of like the big bang of, of a possible Terminator army one day. Yeah, it's, uh, I know it's, it's kind of hard to imagine when we look at these little blocks that kind of look like a, a 3D Tetris game, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's these sorts of breakthroughs, the ability, what's unique about their program is it kind of used uh, a low-tech approach as opposed to the popular high-tech variations. Uh, and they're low-tech, and inside each of these blocks, uh, you can see some of them have little openings so you can see what's inside. It has sort of a spinning flywheel, and that's how they launch themselves into the air to attach to each other. So if one of the little blocks gets separated from his group, he can actually find his way back. So that's where you, you know, if you kind of uh, take that down the line of uh, uh, future iterations, that's where you get sort of the Terminator arm torn off and it's able to find its way back to the body. Ah, I see your point. Well, I mean, but this obviously the technology of been able to put pieces back together in a sense, correct? Yes, it's called, uh, a lot of people call them sort of self-assembling robots. They're modular robots as opposed to kind of the big Johnny Fives that people would be familiar with seeing. Uh, yeah, those are still very slow going. The progress in that has been uh, fast yet slow. You know, I think people are frustrated it's not where they would love it to be. Uh, the sort of uh, George Jetson kind of made robots and the like. We have the Roombas. So, you know, I, I guess it comes back to this. I mean, is this a waste of time? I mean, it's, it's cool technology. It's neat to be able to see these things latch back together. And that's great and fine and dandy. But, you know, we still haven't perfected, for example, the ability, we're, we're getting closer, to, to landing a, a, an unmanned aircraft on an aircraft carrier. I mean, those things you would think would need to come first before you get to, and then you have to build the robots that would even work before you get to a robot that could reattach an arm to itself. Right. Uh, you know I love the practical question, so um, yeah, I, I'd love to talk about that a little bit. So sure, this is very early days. You know, sometimes we talk about things that are right off the assembly line, ready to go and be fielded, and sometimes we talk about really emerging things. And I, I, I like to bring those to you, too, because I think they're fascinating. It just shows where imagination and uh, hard work can take you sometimes. So in the case of this, look, you know, there are little cute little blocks that are flying around, not really capable of much at this point. But when you look at things like the Philippines disaster, uh, that huge natural disaster, wouldn't it be fantastic if we could send an army of these things in, you know, send in an aircraft carrier with, of, with these, and they just sort of take themselves out into the area and help people. They can assemble themselves uh, intelligently into, say, shelters, temporary shelters, to provide shelter for people. They can uh, reconfigure themselves into a bridge if a bridge is down to help get that aid over uh, to the other side of, of a river, for example. So uh, there's really fantastic things they could do on the 
not just the war machine side. Uh, you know, for example, if you want to look at the war type stuff, uh, we often hear people talking about chemical weapons in relation to Syria, but of course it's a problem, a threat we face in more than Syria, other countries. And wouldn't it right. be fantastic? You know, that's you never want to send people into war full stop, but you know, particularly what an awful hazard to send people into that, that invisible sort of chemical biological warfare hazard. So wouldn't it be great if we could send in robots, like armies of these little cubes uh, that we could send in and they could configure themselves into instruments to investigate the situation, identify exactly what the nature of the threat is. Threat is. is it mustard gas? Is it something else? Is it sarin? Uh, you know, bring those samples back without having to put humans out there. You know, and while they're out there, what right. if um, they come across people who need help? They can reconfigure themselves into, say, uh, you know, a UGV that was able to take someone out to safety out of the hot zone and get them the treatment that they need. So, uh, of course, this right. is very early days technology, but I still think it's terribly important to see people uh, committed to making the solutions happen and finding the way to do it. Absolutely, you know, and I always say that rather than calling them transformers, they're almost uh, something along. The, sorry, rather than calling them terminators, they're almost like transformers. I mean, the sense yeah. that, as you mentioned, they could transform themselves into a bridge or into a shelter, depending on the, the necessity. And of course, humanitarian response is a huge, huge deal for our military. Right. Allison Barry, thanks again for joining us in New York.